My dearly beloved in Christ, the parable of the Pharisee and the publican is a very well-known parable and one that conveys a very important lesson to us on humility. And notice that the evangelist, St. Luke, begins by saying that Jesus spoke this parable to some who trusted in themselves as being just and despised others. And so we can see that the sin that they committed was twofold. They committed a personal sin of pride, those to whom our Lord addressed this parable, and they despised, judged, looked down upon, condemned others. Now, I suppose that sometimes <clears throat> the sin of pride does not include a despising of others, but oftentimes it does. And so notice that other aspect of pride. It reminds me of another time in the gospel when our Lord spoke about that. He was speaking about children. And he said, see that you do not despise one of these little ones, for their angels behold the face of my Father. So a despising of others means what? Condemning, looking down upon, judging, criticizing. We have to be very careful not to do that. We read in the prophet Malachi in the Old Testament, have we not all one Father? Hath not one God created us? Why then doth every one of us despise his brother, violating the covenant of our fathers? And here's a quote on not despising others from St. Paul to the Romans. But thou, why judgest thou thy brother? Or thou, why dost thou despise thy brother? For we shall all stand before the judgment seat of Christ. So St. Paul, just like the prophet in the Old Testament, warning the early Christians, don't despise others. Don't judge and condemn. <clears throat> now someone may say, well, what if I am aware of, I see someone, I know of someone who is publicly offending Almighty God. This isn't a judging of something that's interior, but it's very apparent. It's a public display of rebelling against Almighty God. Why am I to pretend that that is not the case? And our answer to that would be, still, we must not despise others Rather, our attitude toward such a one is one of pity. We pity this poor soul who is living far from God, far from the love of God and the fear of God, who is on the path to hell. So we feel sorry for that poor soul. We pity that person. We pray for his or her conversion. But be careful not to despise others. And notice St. Luke says that our Lord told this parable particularly for those who trusted in themselves as being just and despised others. Now going on to the more important aspect of pride. What a lesson in pride. Our Lord concludes by saying, he who exalts himself shall be humbled and he who humbles himself shall be exalted. And we see here that pride is something entirely interior. It will manifest itself exteriorly, but it is an interior sin. <clears throat> and this poor Pharisee who was praying in the temple, who thought himself to be so good and so perfect and so just, committed the sin of pride. But notice in his prayer that everything he prided himself on was an external act. Well, first of all, he said, O oh God, I thank thee that I am not like the rest of men, robbers, dishonest, adulterers, or even like this publican. But then he goes on to say what he did well. I fast twice a week. I pay tithes of all that I possess. So what he took pride in was only something exterior, fasting, paying tithes. But God looks into the heart. And that is where he wants to see virtue. The interior virtues are even more important, much more important than the external. This does not mean that external practices of our faith are not important. 
or to be looked upon, not to be uh, fulfilled. But far more important is that interior spirit of the love of God, of humility, of all the various virtues. So we must concentrate on the interior. We've heard often before that pride is the root of all evils. And pride is something we could say that, that is so offensive to Almighty God, because of course, the proud person appropriates to, him, appropriates to himself the good that he has rather than giving the credit to God. So it is a sort of theft, taking the honor to oneself. Here are a few quotes, an interesting one from the Old Testament, from the book of Judith, which shows us that God rejects the prayer of the proud. For thy power, O Lord, is not in a multitude, nor is thy pleasure in the strength of horses, nor from the beginning have the proud been acceptable to thee. But the prayer of the humble and the meek hath always pleased thee. Now that's just one aspect of humility, that if we're lacking in humility, our prayers are not going to be pleasing to Almighty God. But of course, there are so many other aspects to the harm that comes from pride that we must be aware of. Now here are a few other quotations. This one from the prophet Isaiah. Shall the axe boast itself against him that cutteth with it? Or shall the saw exalt itself against him by whom it is drawn? Or as if a rod should lift itself up against him that lifteth it up, and a staff exalt itself, which is but wood. And St. Paul says to the Corinthians, For who distinguishes thee, or what hast thou that thou hast not received? And if thou hast received, why dost thou glory as if thou hadst not received it. So he asks an important question. What do you have that you have not received from God? Everything, our life, our intellect, our uh, thoughts, everything comes from Almighty God. What hast thou that thou hast not received? And if thou hast received, why dost thou glory as if thou hadst not received it? And again, St. Paul to the Galatians, For if any man think himself to be something, whereas he is nothing, he deceiveth himself. So, of course, there are hundreds of quotations from Scripture on the evil of pride and the importance of humility. We recall that the first sin, the sin of Lucifer, was a sin of pride and rebellion. I will not serve. And then we have Adam and Eve, and they were tempted to pride. The serpent said, the reason God told you not to eat of the fruit of this tree is because he knows if you do, you will be like him. So Eve thought about that, I'll be like God. So it was a temptation of pride. And thus we see that pride is at the root of all evil, just as humility is the foundation of all virtue. So let us be on our guard against pride because it is so insidious, it is so, uh, it passes itself off for good. And there are many aspects to pride. Of course, there's pride of the intellect, uh, taking credit for the good that we do, etc. But especially, be on your guard against spiritual pride. And spiritual pride is the sin of taking credit to ourselves for the virtues that we are able to practice, the good that we are able to do spiritually. And that is especially hateful to God. Because of ourselves, we are nothing. And it's an interesting thing that we read in history, especially the history of heresy, that oftentimes God punishes the proud by withdrawing his grace such that they end up falling into even the most shameful sins. What a terrible punishment for pride that God withdraws his grace, leaves the proud man to himself, and he ends up falling into sin, perhaps even sins that he thought were far removed from him. And it's a just punishment for that person's pride. Of course, you know the old saying that pride goes before the fall, and that's exactly what it means. 
God withdraws his grace and allows the proud man to fall in order to bring him to his senses, to bring him to his knees, and to remind him that all good comes from God. So let us reflect today then on this wonderful parable of the Pharisee and the publican and ask ourselves that question, who am I more like, the proud Pharisee or the humble publican who beat his breast and considered himself unworthy to lift his eyes up in the temple. So he bowed down and begged God, be merciful to me, a sinner. We all are sinners, and so we all ought to be like the poor, humble publican and be very much on our guard against the self-righteous pride of the proud Pharisee, which is so hateful to Almighty God. He who humbles himself shall be exalted and he who exalts himself shall be humbled. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Ghost. Amen.